I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are beginning the conversation of we are not alone. We are not alone. We as the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel today, being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans, we are not alone in this last wicked kingdom. We are not alone in this world this current world. We are not alone. As the judgments of our Father, Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the creator and destroyer, as these judgments continue to amp up upon the earth through our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yahweh Shai, we're going to have to really Remember, we are not alone. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10, For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. So we as the nation of Israel, we are not alone. We have our Father. We have our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, and our Savior, Yahweh Shai. We have our Mother Wisdom. We have the Holy Spirit. And we have this living water, this living word. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 4. And in this living word, we can remember. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The father had respect unto our forefather Abel who had the spirit of humility, the spirit of being a servant unto the one true living most high power. Verse 5, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So our forefather, Abel, chose to be a servant unto the one true living most high power and to humble himself. But the spirit 
inside of Cain, the father already knew and said, if you do well, you can be accepted of me. But if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You can rule over sin. You can rule over sin and wickedness. You can rule. What do you want to do, spirit? What do you want to do? So our forefather Abel understood what to do and bowed himself unto the father. Verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him, murdered his own brother. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? I'm taking care of me. All I'm worried about is me. But the father was concerned about Abel. So Abel was not alone. So we know that this spirit goes on to dwell firmly in the man, the beast, the dragon, Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mount Sierra, the so-called white nation today. And they have no one to call upon because they chose to rule instead of to serve. We are not alone. We always have this word that has been given unto us. And if we can humble ourselves unto what has been written, we can see the future. We can actually see the future. It's been laid out for us. The second book of St. Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. We, the nation of Israel, the one-third of the nation of Israel today, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. The words of this Bible are becoming crystal clear through the Holy Spirit. Crystal, crystal clear. And we can see what has been written coming to pass. And this word if we allow it to, will endure with us until the end of this last wicked kingdom. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh the Anointed, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of the anointed is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, the one who chose to rule over sin, the one who is filled with that spirit and killed its own brother and then lied directly to the one true living most high power. That spirit that wants to do it alone. 
except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition the one who was cursed and damned let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition such that there are no questions who this is. I was having dinner with a friend not long ago in New York City. We met at a place called Oriol, which is in Midtown. My dinner companion that night was a senior advisor to BlackRock. As you may know, BlackRock is now the largest asset manager on the planet. It directly manages $5 trillion in assets, and it oversees another $11 trillion through its Aladdin platform. That means one firm controls more money than the GDPs of China, Russia, and Japan combined. Anyway, my dinner companion happens to work directly for BlackRock's CEO. As we nursed our white wine and the evening wore on, she let something slip. If I remember her words, she said something like, they want to tell us we can't sell. What was she talking about? Who was she talking about? I placed a few calls, first to my contacts in Washington, then to a few people on Wall Street. Soon I was on a plane for a series of meetings to London, to Geneva, back to New York, then down to South America. As I began connecting the dots, a pattern emerged. It revealed a network of more than 189 individuals positioned inside the world's major financial institutions. Some of them hold senior positions inside the IMF, World Bank, and every central bank in the G20, including our own Federal Reserve. These elites share one vision and they're about to make it a reality. That vision is one world order, one world taxation, and one world money. They've worked for years behind the scenes preparing to realize that vision. They've literally rigged the laws of international finance. Everything is basically in place right now, and there's essentially no way to stop this from happening. When the crisis hits, they'll flip the switch, freezing the global financial system. That will give them time to reset the world economy according to their vision. As the coming crisis unfolds, President Trump will be powerless to stop it. In fact, trying to stop them would probably weaken the president's power altogether. That is, that, that, that is amazing, Jim, really. So what did these elites want from your contact at BlackRock? Basically, they want to classify BlackRock as too big to fail. The technical term is Systemically Important Financial Institution, or SIFI. That designation normally applies to banks, such as Bank of America. If your bank gets the SIFI label, it means the government will bail you out first in a crisis but it also means you must turn over control of your bank until the crisis subsides. In this case, they're trying to reclassify BlackRock, an asset manager, as too big to fail. If they succeed, they'll be able to freeze BlackRock when the crisis hits. BlackRock clients won't be able to sell. They won't be able to buy either. Their accounts will go dark indefinitely, and the elite operatives will take control of BlackRock's assets remotely via the internet. But our research shows that their ICE-9 plan goes much, much deeper than that. Now, you refer to their plan as ICE-9. You just said that. What, what does that mean? It's a reference to the Kurt Vonnegut novel, Cat's Cradle. In the book, a mad scientist creates a new form of water molecule called ICE-9. When it comes in contact with other water molecules, it freezes them at room temperature. One drop of ICE-9 can freeze the whole ocean. And that's what these elite operatives are about to do to the world economy. Now, can you share with our viewers exactly who these operatives are and, and what their ultimate goal might be? Like I said, John, more than 189 elite agents have slowly wormed their way into leadership positions across the board. They now sit at or near the head of the IMF, the World Bank, and even our own Federal Reserve. They also control much of what happens at the central banks of China, Russia, India, Brazil, Canada, and Europe. As you know, these institutions form a kind of global superstructure. It forms a kind of snare net encircling all nations. Their leaders aren't democratically elected. They're not accountable to you and me. They're beyond the reach of government and citizens, and yet they hold the fate of the global financial system in their hands. We've identified more than 189 individuals who are in many cases hiding in plain sight. Regardless, they all share the same vision, one world order, one world taxation, and one world money. A short list would include Christine Lagarde, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Mark Carney, Governor of the Bank of England. Raghuram G. Rajan, Vice Chairman of the Bank for International Settlements. Haruhiko Kuroda, Governor of the Bank of Japan. William C. Dudley, President of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Augustine Carstens, Governor of the Bank of Mexico. Janet Yellen, Chairman of the Board of the Federal Reserve System. 
Mario Draghi, president of the European Central Bank, Zhu Min, former deputy managing director of the IMF, Zhou Xiuquan, governor of the People's Bank of China, Robert E. Rubin, chairman of the Council on Foreign Relations. This A-list of central bankers and other elites is just the tip of the iceberg. Of course, not one of these elites will tell you outright what's going on, but I've seen and heard enough to connect the dots for myself. When the next crisis hits, the elites are planning to freeze the financial system, and they'll replace it with a new system, one not based on the U.S. dollar. When that happens, we'll wake up to a very strange and disturbing new reality. And, and for our viewers that are watching today, what might their reality look like that morning? How does this manifest? First, they'll have gone to bed knowing that a massive financial crisis was underway. But when they wake up, they'll find it has worsened and the contagion has spread worldwide. When they go to withdraw money, their ATM will say, close temporarily. When they go to sell stocks, their account will say, transaction not available. When they go to their local business, that business will only accept cash if it's open. As citizens realize they're being barred from their money, riots will erupt. It's going to get really bad really but, quickly. But how would such a freeze actually work? And, and wouldn't that be highly illegal? Well, it wouldn't be illegal technically because they've been quietly laying the groundwork for years. They've rigged the financial laws, changed the rules of the game to allow this to happen. The stage is set. They have the levers in place. The lights are positioned. Now someone just needs to flick a switch and they'll impose ICE-9 rapidly. The book of St. John, chapter 17, verse 11. And now I, I being Yahweh Shai, am no more in the world. World meaning time frame, age, span of time. He was not going to be in the time frame of the devil any longer. But these are in the world, the one-third today, the one-third of the nation of Israel. And I come to thee, to our Father. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. We are not alone. We have this word, we have the anointed, we have our Father, we have wisdom, we have this word. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. The son of perdition is lost. Because the son of perdition doesn't want to serve the one true living most high power at all. At all. So, Yahweh only came unto the nation of Israel. The so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans only people he preached to and testified to those that thou gavest me I have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled the book of Psalms chapter 109 verse 7 when he the man the beast the dragon he saw Edom Idumia Mount Seir the one filled with the spirit of Cain the spirit of Satan when he shall be judged righteously for every single thing that they have done with their mouth, everything they've spoken with their mouth, and everything they have done with their hands and with their feet. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned by his own actions, his and her, his and her his and her when he shall be judged let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin so today they're working really hard to um, get the uh, Israelites to have sympathy for them and, and to get the other nations as well the other families upon the earth to have sympathy for them you know there was this uh, TV show about a serial killer a heinous disgusting horrible murderous, degenerate serial killer. And they tried to make you have sympathy and pity for this one. 
Now, I didn't watch it, but I talked to quite a few people who did. And there was actually a brother who was saying to me, hey, man, I watched the end, and I was like, am I supposed to be liking this guy right now? They want to do uh, clean energy and renewables and this, that, and the other thing to, uh, quote-unquote, try and take care of the earth. It's too late. Those prayers, mm -mm. it's too late. Absolutely too late. There's just no way. There's just no way. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. It's way too late to pray now for forgiveness. To try and go to the other nations and have them understand your point of view and why you did what you did. No, 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 no. You've lived deliciously with no shame. None. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. So that righteously it can be said, and then suddenly. We begin the day deep in the red. Stock markets here in Europe suffered their biggest losses of the year on Monday as the shock waves from a major bank collapse in the U.S. spread around the globe. On Friday, the Silicon Valley Bank, a regional obscure bank, tanked after it spooked customers with plans to sell its own shares to cover losses. In the span of 48 hours, the fear of contagion forced U.S. banking regulators to shut down another bank, the New York-based Signature Bank, on Sunday. The speed of social media plus the cryptic impact of cryptocurrencies, both factors in this government intervention. On Monday, trading in some banking shares was temporarily halted on Wall Street, and it came after U.S. President Biden attempted to reassure the public that this is not another financial crisis in the making. If not, then what is it? A rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history. The Silicon Valley Bank collapsed on March 10 after a run on deposits doomed the tech-focused lenders' plans to raise fresh capital. This prompted U.S. regulators to step in with emergency measures, including seizing another bank three days later in a bid to ease fears that depositors might pull their money from other lenders. WSJ banking reporter Rachel Ensign explains how this crisis unfolded and what could happen next. During the pandemic, Silicon Valley Bank had gotten all of these deposits. Their deposits tripled. It was a huge, huge, huge influx. And they did what banks do. They took some of the deposits and made loans, but they also invested a lot of them in securities, which are pretty safe. Some issues had been bubbling under the surface at Silicon Valley Bank since the Federal Reserve started raising rates. When rates rose, the bonds fell in value. It's not a big problem for you unless you have to go and sell the bonds. But deposits started leaving the bank faster than they anticipated. And they had to sell their bonds and take a very big loss. The bank made an announcement on Wednesday night that it needed to raise capital and was planning to do that the next day. The investors completely freaked out, sold off the stock, and then a bank run started where people tried to withdraw $42 billion in deposits just in that one day. And by Friday morning, it was seized by regulators. The regulators have responded in a way that they're hoping stems the panic. The Fed said, we're going to be offering this lending facility that's a backstop. We're going to be insuring all of the deposits effectively of this bank that failed. The collapse matters because it could have broader economic effects. There was the risk that this panic would spread to other parts of the banking system. We saw some really significant news with some of the banks that investors were most concerned about last week. Most notable, Signature Bank, a New York-based bank, was also seized on Sunday night. It is the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. And First Republic put out a statement saying they'd gotten some extra money from the Federal Reserve and also from J.P. Morgan. They're hoping that that reassures their investors and their depositors. Smiling faces on Wall Street this morning, a day after America's biggest banks pledged billions to stabilize the mid-tier lender First Republic Bank and urged jittery investors not to panic. But by this morning, it was clear they weren't listening. 
Shares in First Republic tumbled 20% in early trading, despite the $30 billion lifeline announced just the night before, as persistent fears about the health of America's banking sector trumped all else, sending all three major stock markets into the red, the Dow, the Nasdaq and the S&P. I can reassure the members of the committee that our banking system is sound and that Americans can feel confident that their deposits will be there when they need them. That was the Treasury Secretary yesterday doing her best to convince senators and the public that all was well. A week after, the little-known Silicon Valley Bank kicked off the current crisis by disclosing a massive hole in its balance sheet, sparking a run on the bank and forcing US authorities to step in and guarantee all deposits. But far from calming markets, another lender, Signature Bank, also failed. And then the jitters spread to Europe, where the troubled Swiss bank, Credit Suisse, welcomed an emergency lifeline from its central bank with open arms. At the heart of this current banking turmoil are rising interest rates and weaker regulation for mid-tier banks like Silicon Valley Bank that encouraged its executives to take ever greater risks. Now, Joe Biden said today he was determined to punish those executives who, in his words, are responsible for this mess. But that's unlikely to cut it for the markets who look at those interest rates and fear there could be more pain to come. The federal government has an obligation to protect the safety and soundness of our banking system, which is the cornerstone of our economy. Uh, without a banking system, our economy will come crashing down. So we must do everything we can to protect our banking system and to prevent a cascade of bank failures. That's what the American Central Bank, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury thought they had achieved by stepping in to rescue SVB, guaranteeing all deposits and opening an emergency fund for other banks who may need it. But you know you're in trouble when news that the banks have accessed that fund is itself spooking the markets. Witness the shares of other mid-tier lenders like Zions and Western Alliance banks also getting pummeled today. The man, the beast, the dragon, Esau, Edom, Idumi, Mount Sierra, they were the leaders, the ringleaders, the head. They have the most powerful influence upon the earth today. But in the oppression of the nation of Israel, they weren't alone. They were the ringleader, but they weren't alone. The book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 17. Sirach is also called Ecclesiasticus, and can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the King James 1611 Bible. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he, how the most high power, set a ruler over every people. The Father is in control of all things. But Israel is Yahweh's portion, but we belong unto the one true living most high power. He will deal with us personally and intimately. Remember, the commandments, the statutes, and the laws were given unto the nation of Israel directly. Verse 18, whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, and giving him the light of his love doth not forsake him. So the light of our father's love was Yahweh Shai, being down here, speaking with us face to face and then being that most holy sacrifice for the nation of Israel. The second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 14. For not as with other nations, whom Yahweh patiently forbeareth to punish, till they be come to the fullness of their sins, so dealeth he with us. So our Father lovingly nourisheth us with discipline. When we get out of line, he puts us back into line. When we get out of line, he puts us back into line. But these other nations, all these other nations, they're going to get their full judgment 
all at once. And we are watching that amp up upon the earth today. For not as with other nations, whom Yahweh patiently forbeareth to punish, till they be come to the fullness of their sins, so, so dealeth he with us. Verse 15, lest that being come to the height of sin, afterwards he should take vengeance on us. The father waited till all these other nations came to the height of their wickedness and their filthiness and their unrighteousness and their abominations and their oppressions of the nation of Israel and their uh, mockery of the nation and the son and the father with Esau being at the top filled with hatred for his own brother lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards he should take vengeance of us and therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us and though he punish with adversity yet doth he never forsake his people these other nations they are feeling the vengeance of the one true living most high power through his son uh but as i went to the bank um the, the doors were shut there was a notice up on there by fdic and uh, which put us in a scram bit of a scramble mode where jack, I had to jack can i stop my, you right okay, there yeah. i mean what is that experience like to work hard to be part of a business, a business that is thriving, you want to pay your employees, and you go to the bank and you're seeing police outside, you're seeing statements on the window, and you can't get your money. It is definitely scary. Look, um, part of the reason being a startup, you, you, you definitely, uh, the employees that you bring on, the way you have them buy in is that we will take care of them, that they don't have to worry about their payroll at, at the minimum, and we're doing the things the right way, but then suddenly when this happens, it definitely makes you question uh, what's happening with the banks, what's happening with the system. Um, we have been in just in damage control mode overall on how to get the payrolls out today for the employees who've been working hard. They, they don't have any reason to not get paid. Um, so so how, are you, how are you paying them? Um, I'm lucky enough to have some savings uh, in my personal accounts, which which I bank with a different bank. And, Wait, you're uh, using your personal money, money now? You're using your personal money to, to cover the payroll? That's correct. I'm, I'm hoping that by uh, the next payroll, some of this will be resolved and, and we should we hopefully would have access to our funds. If not, then we, we are thinking about what that would look like as well. Has the bank told you anything? Have, have they called you? Have they apologized? Have they told you they're going to they're gonna get you your money? No, that is the frustrating thing with Silicon Valley Bank. We just simply haven't been able, we have been trying to get somebody on the phone since yesterday. Um, no calls, no communication yet. The only communication we have seen is through FDIC. The second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 6, verse 5. And ere the present years were sought out, and before the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned, before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure. Now see, there's two, right? There's two, there's only two. Uh, them that now sin and they that have gathered faith for a treasure. Those that are servants of the one true living most high power and those that rule sin. Verse six, then did I consider these things and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. Our Father comes in the name of the Son. Verse 7, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So this is our Father the prophet Ezra speaking unto the most high power. Verse 8, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Verse 9, For Esau, the man, the beast, the dragon, Esau, Edom, Idumea, Mount Seir, the so-called white nation, for Esau is the end of the world. World meaning time frame, age, span of time. 
For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob, the nation of Israel, is the beginning of it that followeth. So many brothers and sisters who are coming back to the truth get so stuck that this kingdom must end, but it must. It must. And we have a more sure word of prophecy as we continue to watch the judgments upon this earth amp up. So you must choose to serve the one true living most high power and his son or to follow the one who rules over sin. Their time is coming to an end. And they are being seen for exactly who they are. By the way, the SBV uh, executives took bonuses on Friday. We'll see whether that gets clawed back. Did you just say that the Silicon Valley bank owners took bonuses on Friday? That is uh, exactly true. Uh, on Friday morning, before the FDIC took over the bank, they, in fact, distributed bonuses. We have inflation that's rampant if you look at what inflation over 200 years what it's done to countries that had to suffer through it destroys the countries it's like cancer destroys the countries we have now banks that are closing two banks two big banks yesterday closed that's a bad sign that could be the beginning we have an economy that's in shambles you know last year you don't realize this last year we had the worst stock market since 1929 did you know that we had the worst stock markets. You know, you don't think of it because you continue to do. It's tighter. It's tougher. You have inflation. You, your gasoline costs you four or five times as much in some cases. But we had the worst stock market since 1929. It actually goes back longer than that. It goes back to, I think, 1887. But I said, let's use 1929 because people understand. That was called the Great Depression. But we had the worst stock market. Uh, people have their... 401ks. Does anybody have a 401k? Raise your hand if you're happy with it, because not too many people. Anybody happy with the results? Because I'll tell you what, they were happy when I was running this country. They were making a fortune with a 401k. If you can see, you know that we are not alone. that our Father through the Son is drawing nearer and nearer to the earth. And we are drawing nearer and nearer to the end of this last wicked kingdom. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 28. For Yahweh loveth judgment. Remember this. Remember this. For Yahweh loveth judgment. And forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of of the wicked shall be cut off. We have a more sure word of prophecy. So the Father loveth judgment and is a righteous judge. And we shall all, all nations and families upon this earth shall be judged for the words of their mouths and the actions of their hands and their feet. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 41, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob just like Cain decided to do to Abel. This is the son of perdition. This is the one that is damned and cursed. 
This is one who cannot rest at night because they know that it is being righteously said about this last wicked kingdom and then suddenly now, Russian fighter jets have intercepted and forced down an American drone. This happened over the Black Sea, and U.S. officials say the drone was flying into international airspace. Reporter Nick Harper is on this story for us and joins us now from Washington. Uh, Nick, what more do we know about this incident? Yeah, news of this coming to light in the last couple of hours. The United States putting out a statement initially. Since then, we've also heard from a spokesperson at the Pentagon. We're told that this unmanned aerial drone was flying over international waters, over the Black Sea, just off of Crimea to the west of it, that it was carrying out uh, what they call an intelligence surveillance and recon reconnaissance operation. Uh, this was a, a routine operation, they say. It was in international airspace. But they say that during the course of this operation, the drone was approached by two Russian fighter jets. The jets then dumped uh, fuel over the drone. They flew in front of the drone, and one of them then, we're told, the US says, intercepted it and hit the drone, clipping one of its propellers, resulting in a crash and a complete loss of the drone. Most of that coming from the statement that was put out earlier. The book of St. Mark, chapter 3, verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So just as we, the nation of Israel, are of the house of our forefather, Jacob, whose name became Israel, through the covenant that the Father has with our uh, forefather, King David, we are now of the house of King David under his name. So are all the descendants of Esau, Edom, Idumea, Mousier. They are of the they are the house of Edom. They are the Edomites. And Esau is the father of the Edomites. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Today, 17th of March, 2023, the International Criminal Court has issued two warrants of arrest in the Ukraine situation for Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, and for Maria Vovabelova, Commissioner of the Russian President for Children's Right, for the alleged war crimes of deportation of children from Ukrainian occupied territories into the Russian Federation. The ICC is doing its part of work. As a court of law, the judges issued arrest warrants. The execution depends on international cooperation. Putin. Nobody will arrest him. Rather, he'll arrest everyone. We will protect him, the people of Russia. It will be a pity if our president is arrested. I do not think that's possible. This is a public figure and the president of the country. How do you imagine? Any president has sovereignty. He cannot be arrested or imprisoned unless it's the decision of the internal government agencies. Can you see the house of Edom cracking and falling apart? Can you see 
this last wicked kingdom clearly on the path that has been laid out in prophecy oh it's going to fall it's begun it's epic fall because the father has decreed it and who can they call their forefather chose to be the ruler of sin here upon earth so who can they call understand the times that we are in and know that there are going to be some dark moments but we are not alone the last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 62 verse 11 behold Yahweh hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, the one-third of the nation today, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. To the Father, through the Son is coming to bring that salvation that was spoken about. That is a sure word of prophecy. It has to come through the destruction of this last wicked kingdom and the end of this world. Time frame, age, span of time. It must be done this way. For those that have been patient and done their best to keep their spiritual garments clean, there is a reward for that. And his work is before him. Remember, Yahweh is coming with the clouds. Look at the weather. Look at the weather. Look at the powerful judgments that are going on upon this earth. They've actually stopped talking about Turkey, but they're still digging over there. They're still digging in Turkey after those major uh, judgments. This word is being spoken as Yahweh Shai said it would. It's being spoken to the world. Verse 12, And they shall call them, the nation of Israel, the one-third today, the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The only way to be sought out is if there is someone else. And for the nation of Israel, there is someone else. A loving father, and we are his children. And because the nation of Israel is considered a woman, we, the nation of Israel, are waiting uh, to be with our husband. We are not alone. And even while we wait, we have the Holy Spirit. And we have this word that is actually coming to life right before our eyes, if we can see. Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest, and Brother Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11 Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing 
can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.